a motion to waive the reading of the minutes, Mr. Chin? Yes, Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to waive the reading of the minutes from the prior meeting. Second. 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 Uh, Second. Roll, roll call. Vote. Art Nakins? Yes. Charlie O'Brien? Yes. Russell Chin? Yes. Brian Riddell? Yes. John Himmel? Yes. Okay. <laughs> uh, one thing to do first, we're going to move one meeting here and uh, mm -hmm. work. Thank you. Case number ZBA 2053. 224 President's Lane. Could I have a motion to move that until September 13th? I mean, uh, October 13th, please. Me? Yep. Mr. Chair, Mr. Chairman, regarding case 20 53, Ng et Bun for a variance to construct a new single family dwelling on a lot on the premises number 224 President's Lane, Quincy. I'd like to make a motion to postpone until October 13th. Second. I can take a roll vote. Martin Aiken? Yes. Charlie O'Brien? Yes. Russell Chin? Yes. Brian Riddell? Yes. John Himmel? Yes. Tonight's agenda. Case number ZBA 2042. Richard Sohu for a special permit floodplain variance to resubdivide the three lots in the two building lots, maintain the existing dwelling, construct a new dwelling on the premise 168 furnace trucks. Is he asking their representative here around? Who might that be? Uh, hi, I'm here. Uh, my representative for the Steve DeRoach uh, in the Ponce Valley survey. Uh, I think he should be coming on at some point. We're getting him now. Yeah, he should be coming on. He was, he was texting. All right, I'm here, guys. All right, Steve. Hi, Steve, Richard. Yeah. Oh. Good evening, board members. Do you hear me? Hey, yep. hey, see ya. You on the phone? No, I'm on the uh, I'm on the uh, computer. Can you hear me? We can hear you, Steve. There you are. Hey, Steven. You got me, huh? Okay. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. Matthew, do you want to start the presentation? You have, yes. Okay. I'm here tonight uh, with Mr. Richard Sohu, and uh, I'm representing him. He is the owner of three parcels of land on Furnace Park Parkway, number 168 Furnace Park Parkway. Mm -hmm. Mr. Soho has asked us to take a look and see how we could most possibly uh, develop this property with the addition of another house. Uh, we do have our plans in front of you that shows uh, the uh, location of a new 26, uh, 27 and a half foot by 30 foot, three inch uh, new single family house on the lot. Um, the house itself conforms to all the uh, setbacks of the Zoning Board of Appeals. The only problem with the, is with the lot, the lot is undersized and it does not have the sufficient frontage. Um, we have done the best we can with it, uh, maintaining what we can as far as the uh, existing house is concerned with setbacks. Um, the, uh, the house is in a flood hazard zone and uh, we would have to go before the Conservation Commission should the, uh, the ZBA approve this uh, petition. Unless you get something else you'd like to hear from me, I, I think you guys are going to be very, very busy with this one because I was talking to Noreen today and she was saying that the, uh, there was a ton of uh, correspondence coming in on this. So I'm sure you're yeah. going to read everything. Uh, so I'll open it up to any but questions. If, anybody if may you have. had the uh, a lot, the way the lot isn't squared off, you got that little L shape. Correct. Why'd they do that? Just to get what? more to get more area, Marty. Yeah. As yeah. you see, we're, we're missing about 400 square feet. Yeah. What do you got for the frontage on that? Uh, about 61 and a half feet. 
which is deficient by almost 25 feet, 24 feet. Six, 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 one, five, five. Okay. Is there anyone uh, on the board that has any questions of him right now? Uh, not at this time. Okay. None at this time. Okay. Marty, the, uh, the application says it's dimensional regulations, but we also, are we, do we have a floodplain variance too? Or? Uh, yeah. Yes, we do, Brian. Yeah. Correct. And uh, uh, okay. Is there anyone? We'll uh, we'll hold our questions to the end, I guess. If there's anyone that wants to be in favor of this, please raise your hand. Or is it with the staff? Where's the man? Uh, virtual hand raise or a star virtual nine. hand raise or a star nine. Is there anyone want to speak in favor? Council, you want to wait to the end? Council, uh, I could start it off, Marty, if you wanted to break the ice here a little bit. If that's okay, I'll be quick because I know there's a lot of people I think that are opposed to it. Um, we had a community meeting. For the board, uh, just so the board knows, uh, last Thursday, I want to thank Mary Lou Petrelli and her brother Bob. They opened their home, their backyard, uh, 205 Marymount Road, which is in a butter to that L-shaped uh, section of the lot. And we had, of course, a, a nice community meeting with <coughs> people, of course, socially distanced. Um, if you look at the whole neighborhood, <clears throat> which was good for me to go to the community meeting. You know, it, it's surrounded by uh, a very strong uh, Marymount neighborhood. Most of the lots are between five and 6,000 square feet. Um, but most of the neighbors that are there have been there and have a vested interest uh, in, in, in the whole neighborhood, the San Marcet area and Marymount Road. When I looked at the pros and cons, when I left the meeting, um, you know, there were a lot of talk, a lot of good points about um, Mr. Soho, or Suho, um, who's been, I think the family's been in that house for quite some time, but, um, you know, his involvement in the community and living there is is, is kind of non-existent. Uh, the neighbors um, brought up various things that will have to be answered in CONCOM if this gets approved and about flooding um, of course, about not living in the in the dwelling that's there now all the time uh, and kind of looking at it like, <clears throat> well, like almost everybody does, they're looking to develop, they're looking to sell and move on. And I could tell by the neighborhood, um, you know, they frowned on it. They brought up a lot of points about hardship. They brought up a lot of points about open space going away. Um, they brought up the, uh, of course, they brought up that they were going to, uh, put a petition in because a lot of the neighbors didn't want to see another piece of uh, nice land and a nice, a nice big lot. And it is a big lot, no doubt about it, go away in Marymount. So um, I'll um, let the neighbors uh, jump in. I think um, it's a tough one, uh, but, but I'm kind of leaning uh, myself uh, towards the neighborhood. When you sit back and take a look at um you know, what's being done down here, you, it's being done everywhere. And, um, you know, I wouldn't mind it slowing down a little bit. And uh, this might be a good point in, in a neighborhood that is, uh, you know, predominantly single families. There's a few surrounding two families, but it's predominantly a strong neighborhood of res A and folks that are going to be there and have a vested interest. So um, there was big concern uh, about about that. I, I looked up Furnacebrook Parkway a little bit. The lots get a little bit bigger. The lots are pretty much 5,000 square feet up Samoset. Um, but I don't think the lot size uh, was um, was a, a, a factor. I think it was more some of those items I listed on the uh, the neighborhood getting eaten away a little bit more um, 
a little bit each time something like this happens. So I'll, I'll come back, Marty, at the end, but um, mm-hmm. I'll, I'll, I'll give it back to you and the board. And, um, you know, I, I know it's up to the board. The board has the decision, but um, uh, the neighbors uh, did make a lot of good points. Thank you. Thank you, Council. Is there anyone else like to speak in favor? Wendell Cosgrove. Wendell Cosgrove, you up? Yeah, yeah, yes. Hi, uh, hello, board. Uh, my name is Wendell Cosgrove. I live hey, at. If you could hold on one minute, Wendell. Uh, yeah. We want to make sure you take an oath to speak. Mr. Chin, if you could please swear him in. Right. Uh, do you sh- swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in the matter now in hearing? Yes, I do. Thank you. Wendell, you're up. Thank you, Marty. The video's uh, not working. Oh, uh, hang on one second. Um, here I am. There you are. All right, thank there you. There he is. There I am. So I live at 208 Marymount Road, which is uh, just across the street, directly across from the 168 project. And um, I'm very much in favor of the project uh, for several reasons. Uh, one of those reasons is the fact that um, the lot itself is, in my in my view, considerably large enough to support the building of a an, of the residence that they've proposed before the board. Um, I've lived in Quincy my entire life, and I've lived at this address uh, since 1984. And I'm well aware of the amount of building. Uh, both residential, commercial, and business that is going on in the city. And um, although I respect uh, Mr. McCarthy's comments regarding the neighborhood, um, building a second residence on that particular spot is not going to, in my view, uh, hamper the neighborhood at all. In fact, it'll only present itself with another house in Marymount that is a good tax base uh, would be built according to spec and um, would be in line with what the board has allowed in the past regarding all of the different uh, additions or renovations and or building of residential properties throughout the various neighborhoods in the city. Um, in addition, I'd just like to say that uh, I'm what, the property is well maintained. Uh, the family has lived in that particular residence for multiple generations and they've contributed heavily uh, in both the business and the residential um, communities of the city of Quincy for years. So I, I just wanna go on the record as saying that it's not, in my view, it's not going to diminish the neighborhood, but in fact will actually, when it, uh, is, if it is approved to be built, would actually enhance the neighborhood by providing another uh, home in an excellent neighborhood uh, that uh, serves the city well and serves the neighborhood well. And thank you for letting me speak my comments. Thank you, Mr. Cosgrove. Thanks for your comments. Anyone else like to speak in favor? Is there anyone else like to speak in favor? No, that was, wasn't that just on his? What about Crystal Aria? He wants to speak in post. Okay. I don't know if it's Mary Lou is speaking. Mary Lou, are you in favor? No, I'm not. Okay. All right. We didn't know if you wanted to speak. Thank you. I do want to speak, but not in favor. You will. You will. We have time for that. Is there uh, anyone else that wants to speak in favor? Second call? Kevin? Oh, no, no. Don't raise your hand. And don't raise your hand if you don't, unless you want. Uh, uh, that's it. Any correspondence? Letter from the DBA. And the letter here from the DPW dated September 11, 2020. 168 Furnace Brook Parkway, case number ZBA 2042. We've reviewed the middle of the above reference project. Our comments are as follows. Specify how much impervious area will be increased due to the development. Provide plans showing the layout of utility grading, drainage, and construction details. Three, explain how the surface runoff will be discharged and treated. Four, approval for the curb cut from the state is required. 
five. Upon completion of this project, Ellsville plans showing all utilities and building footprints need to be submitted. An elevation certificate is also required for dwelling from the flood zone. Is there anything else? All opposition. Okay. And these are just uh, letters and petitions, cards and reports. Well, well, yeah, all right. All yeah. kinds of let me just look at what we got here. All right, don't forget to swear everyone in. Yeah. Yeah. There was only one guy that we had so far. Mr. Oh, yeah. Uh, the owner, so mm -hmm. he wants to respond, but I you may want to ask him if he wants to speak now. Speak his piece now. He's in favor. Uh, I don't know. The owner? The owner. Mr. Uh, no, no, he can he can speak now in favor if he wants to before I move on. Mr. Suhu, you have a right to speak now if you are in favor of this project, which you would be, uh, not to respond to the neighborhood and go back and forth. That's not how they work. What we got to do is people are in favor speak, people are against speak, and the board makes up their mind. So would you like to speak now? Yes. Can you hear me? Okay. Yep. You're okay. up. Okay. Uh, hello to everyone. Uh, hello to uh, the neighbors that I do know and hello to the neighbors that I don't know. Uh, just a little bit of background on myself and why I'm trying to do this. You know, maybe that'll alleviate some of the concerns, but uh, it may have been mentioned before that my grandmother owned that house prior to me. Uh, she bought it in 1950, mm -hmm. uh, raised nine children there. We were one of the first you know, Chinese families in Quincy. Uh, they owned and operated the China Star on C Street over by the police station. Uh, my entire family grew up uh, at 168 Furnace Park Parkway, including myself as a child. Spent a lot of time there. Mm -hmm. I didn't go to Quincy High School, but I did spend every summer of my high school and college career uh, working at the Quincy Dairy Queen on the Point. Uh, and until recently, you know, I was an active member of the Quincy community. Mm -hmm. I may not have been active in the areas that my neighborhood was active in, but I did go to the Quincy Y growing up. I uh, worked out at the CrossFit over on, uh, over by the storage facility before it moves uh, recently, it moved recently, CrossFit toe to toe. I still have many friends and many family members that live in Quincy. Uh, so, when you say that I'm not invested in the community, I find that to be a little bit offensive uh, because I am invested in the community. I'm deeply connected to that house. It's uh, my grandmother's dying wish that that house stay in the family. So I have no intention of selling that house. Uh, in fact, I'm doing everything I possibly can to maintain it. Um, and to that end, you know, I've always had a roommate, me and my wife. I think I've lived maybe one or two years in the last 10 years that I've owned it without having a roommate to help me make ends meet on it. Uh, recently, probably about three years ago, uh, I had to end my employment in Boston. And that's why I had to move, you know, to find employment elsewhere. And part of doing that involved not competing with my family's business. And it happened to bring me to Martha's Vineyard. Uh, you may think that only rich people live here. But in that regard, you are sadly mistaken. The people that live on Martha's Vineyard year round are tradespeople, they're hardworking people, they're the people that clean the houses of the rich people. And you know, we help maintain them and we do all that. Uh, so in that regard, it's you know very, very much so not a land of the rich. Uh, I encourage you to come down in the winter, it's the best time of the year. Uh, and also, when you say that I don't live in that house anymore, I do live in that house. It's just that I don't have the time to go back to it. You know, uh, the commute to Martha's Vineyard from Quincy is a 45 minute boat ride plus a two hour car ride for me. Uh, you know, I start work in the morning and I don't get off until the evening. I, it would be, uh, I'd have to leave my house at four o'clock in the morning and get home at eight o'clock at night if I were to do that commute. Uh, but, you know, I do hope to, you know, bring my young daughter back to Quincy to live in that house, uh, maybe uh, not in the near future, but sometime in the future. You know, I, I really appreciate the Quincy school system and what they're doing. Uh, I appreciate what the town of Quincy has been doing to develop itself. And I want to contribute to that. Uh, 
you know, and I really am not doing this as a cash grab or anything. And, and in doing it, you know, I'm open to hearing your concerns and I want to work with you as opposed to against you on this. So you know, that's my piece. Uh, I'm open to any questions or whatever. So, so that was the Lee family that owned that, correct? It was, yeah, that's my grandma. Okay. Yeah, 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 good person. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'll, I'll get into uh, the other side in one moment. I read that uh, before we have the, just have, you know, I can't read, uh, all the names is, please find the signatures of neighbors in opposition to 168. And there's a couple accident reports here of accidents that happened on that road, but uh, I, I can't even read half of these. Maybe the clerk can help me with this. Uh, you see how many people are on that list and then we'll just, we can check the names after this. I have two reports here. Just so, just just for knowledge for the board, 168 Furnace Park Parkway, 192 Furnace Park Parkway, Mary Young accidents. Uh, we see who recording person, 168, 192. Rock Street, so we address just car accidents that happened on that road, I guess, and there's log, log on Monday's dates, uh, 5.26.20, and this goes back to this. Two action reports. The has 111 signatures. There's 111 it. signatures. Not all legible. Yeah, I know, a lot of mine legible. It's a photocopy. Yeah, it's a photocopy we have here. There's 111 people sign this petition. Submitted by the Gary's. Sign. By the Gary's? Yep. Gary's. All right, is there anyone opposed or undecided like to speak? Harry Lou? Please, Mr. Chen, if you could. Why don't we, uh, how many people, raise your hand, how many people want to speak? We can do this all at once if we, if we want to. We can have everyone kind of. Unless we have to do one at a time. I don't know how many people are there, but uh, all right. Why don't you do Mary Lou? We'll just go one yeah. at a time. To see, this this will get great. It'll be too much fun. You want me to but, swear Mary Lou in? Yeah. Why don't you do that, Mr. Chen, please? Do you, do you solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in the matter now in hearing? Yes, I do. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I guess maybe I should give you a little bit of history of uh, this area. Um, my name is Mary Lou Petrelli. I live at 205 Marymount Road, and I abut the um, Richards um, house on two sides, the back and one side. Um, we were the first house built here. My father built this house in 1953. This is all marshland that it's built on. Um, the house that the Lees then bought from the Georges, I believe, was built in the late 50s, early 60s. And the Lees came there in the 60s. They've always been lovely neighbors, so I don't have a problem with them being neighbors. My problem is that we're on marshland. Anytime you disrupt the water table here, you're going to cause flooding. And I do not want that to happen. I know the engineer has talked about that they have ways of dispersing it and all, but if you take a full <clears> glass of water, whether you drop a dime in it or a rock, you're gonna displace that water. I'm very concerned about the water table. I'm also concerned about, I know that we had to have piles drilled to have the foundation put in. And um, Mr. DeRoche said that they would not be putting piles in our basement in that house, but there will still be pounding uh, of some sort and possibly uh, cracks and, and damages to properties around it. Also, the piece of property is smaller than is required. And this is not a hardship for them. Um, if they needed to do this for a hardship, I could maybe understand it, but 
as I said, I don't have a problem with my neighbors. The Lees have always been lovely people. And um, I've always enjoyed um, having them as neighbors, but I'm very opposed to this structure because of those reasons. Thank you. Anyone else like to speak? Raise your hand. Mr. Ball. Chris. Yeah. So we're uh, direct. We're Julia from Swan, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. Um, do you solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in the matter now and here? Do. Thank you. You have the floor. Address. Address. 154. Furnacebrook Parkway. Okay, you're up. <clears throat> so we abut directly with uh, uh, the house, uh, the property, and uh, on the east-west side. Uh, that's a long way. And um, so, yep. So uh, one of the things is that we oppose the project and, and we will appeal to move forward uh, for the, the basic reason that it's not complying with the ordinance. Uh, it's in violation of two measurements. I believe ordinance is put together uh, for the good uh, and for the good of the city and the neighborhood and the way developers should play uh, by those rules. Um, the, there is there's no evidence on the on the information that we receive uh, that um, you know it would it would not be detrimental to the public health, safety, and welfare. Um, we are I'm an architect, I'm a registered architect, and the Commonwealth, and I I do understand the, the layout, what the intent is, and I have my concerns that uh, that adding, uh, and I'm gonna risk, I'm gonna go along with uh, Mary Lou, is uh, you know the more surface that we add to a marsh field that you cannot sit back through and do its thing. Um, we have to displace the water. That's going to be um, an important piece to think about. Um, also, you know, the, the fact that the house, uh, uh, the proposed house is in close proximity to mine, although still is within uh, the side setbacks, uh, is not, it was not there in 1941 when this house was built. Uh, it was not there when we purchased this home. Uh, and if we have the structure in there, it would certainly not be the same decision that we made uh, to uh, start our you know, family, uh, community uh, involvement in, in this neighborhood. Uh, not to, and, and I wanted to just to add a little bit of also uh, what I call the safety concerns as to, I, I know it's a state road. Um, one of the, um, the issues we've had in the past is the um, amount of traffic, uh, the amount of uh, uh, people walking and using the sidewalks because of uh, its placement and the environment. And I believe uh, based on what uh, the information is provided, uh, that driveway uh, would not uh, provide a solution or would not be of any uh, uh, positive impact to the current situation. Um, and, and, and not to mention that you know the the um, the current uh, uh, what's it called um, no no the current sure but the the condition of the house and, and the condition of the of the of the grounds uh, and and the fence it's it's an indicator of lack of understanding of the ordinance. Um, it's the the, the fence of the right, front. Let's get a move on. There's hundreds of people are going to talk. So okay. Wrap it okay. Up so and I'll get it yeah. back. Thank you. Anyone else? I know there's, there's tons of people up here. Mr. Gary. Yes. You want to take an oath, please, Mr. Chin? Absolutely. Mr. Gary, do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in the matter now in hearing? I do. Thank you. You're up. Name All right. So my name is Kevin Gary. I uh, live at 10 Somerset Road, uh, 10 Somerset Ave with my wife and four kids. I directly abut uh, Mr. Sue, who uh, is rare. Um, so, you know, 
myself, I'm actually one of the people that have gone around and talked to a lot of the neighbors. So I, I have compiled my notes. I'm probably going to be about three minutes. If that's OK. Three minutes. All is right. Great. So, uh, you know, speaking on the behalf of myself and the neighbors, um, I have to say we're really at a loss of words. First off, um, you know, when we received this notice for the meeting, there was no forewarning um, and we hadn't anticipated anything for this. Um, Mr. Suhu has been asked by multiple neighbors about buying portions of that land. Uh, and before he had stated that he wasn't interested in dividing it. And then we got this. Um, so I, I kind of feel confident speaking the overwhelming majority of the neighbors. Um, you know, the signatures you got were just this weekend. Uh, and we have a number of objections. So I think some of them might be uh, already said, but you know, after reviewing the city's dimensional table and reviewing Mr. Uh, DeRoche's uh, submitted plan, um, they're requesting variances on multiple points of uh, both lot A and lot B, which would result in not one, but two new non-conforming lots. Um, so that's a problem. Um, we also, as a neighborhood, can't understand why the city would allow such a thing to proceed, considering that there's no known hardship for Mr. Suhu, and that, um, that would cause them to request a multitude of variances to be approved, um, especially with at what cost to the neighbors. Um, we also believe it's a dangerous location to insert a new driveway in Furnace Brook. It's a difficult mm -hmm. curve in the road. Uh, so we yeah. did submit some QPD action reports for that location. Um, unfortunately, it's a state road and the state of mass actually takes a little bit longer than QPD to get reports. Um, but that's also <laughs> why we had those reports. Um, so, you know, the last, one of the last things I want to say is that Mr. Suhu is, uh, is not a good neighbor to us and he's not a good neighbor to the city of Quincy. He lives on the vineyard. He has businesses that are outside of Quincy. He has no real ties or vested interest in the community besides his family was a great family. Um, you know, it's particularly demonstrated by this plan, which just shows blatant redemption God to the neighbors. Uh, there's presently a standing violation of zoning codes uh, for fences he knowingly constructed in violation of our city codes. Uh, he's been cited numerous times over the past five years, and he has little concern for the impact it has on us as a butters or the rules that Quincy has put forth. Uh, the fence is still presently standing behind me. Um, and just lastly, I'd like to add that while I realize that it'd be more an issue for the Cons Conservation Commission uh, to look closely at, if heaven forbid, this went through, you know, we are all in the flood zone and it's extremely concerning as a butters about the detrimental effect that it could have if a new foundation is dug and poured, uh, displacing water needs. And uh, also the driving the pilings alone is liable to crack all of our foundations, leaving us with lasting repercussions. Overall, the project is detrimental to our neighborhood. Nearly every neighbor on the surrounding blocks has voiced their opposition to this proposal by signing our petition um, and as a community, we're not really willing to roll over on this uh, at the cost of our water views, our rights to privacy, the impact of our home values and structural stability, and probably more. And, you know, at the end, it's just for the financial gain of one developer who doesn't have ties here anymore. Thanks. And all. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. Get on mute again. You got to unmute it again. So I just want to add, lastly, that, um, you know, if this was to go forward, uh, we are prepared to um, take up counsel and um, file an appeal. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else like to speak? Jenny? Want to take a note? Hi there. Sure. All right. And, you know, do, you, do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in the matter now in hearing? Thank you. Last name, please. Jenny, what's your name and address, please? Jenny Clesis, 88 Furnace Brook Parkway. 88, okay. And, and, and truth be told, I raised my hand prior to the gentleman uh, previously to me speaking. Um, I'm in complete agreement. They, they spoke to all my points, so I, I'll be uh, mindful of everybody's time here. But I have a few other concerns about the dig up of the mice, the rats, the, the outpour um, mm -hmm. of what's going to happen from the construction and the precedent uh, that it's going to set um, in the diversion of the land. This is Marymount, and and we 
we purchased here April last year and we purchased here for a reason of um, community and um, the single family homes, it being a res A um, and the lack of actually um, multi multifamily homes. There is not a single multifamily home in, you know, the Marymount neighborhood that I can, that I know of. Mm -hmm. um, so for this divide, for this lot, to be divided and added another home. I was, I'm neighbor to a permit that was issued to the house next door that was revoked last year because the permit, they abused the permit and they, and, and it, the community in, in the community suffered because of that. So I don't want that to, and they suffered for five years. So until we moved in and were able to put a kibosh to it. So with that being said, it, it's clearly, if, if he's not present, and he's not living in his home full time. I am having a hard time understanding why this is such a hard conversation to have. Um, because if he's not here 24 seven as a resident, thank you for paying your taxes, but sell your house. Sorry. I know that sounds very, very aggressive, but it's, if you don't live here and you are in a financial hardship, just sell your house. Don't divide it. So you can move back into it in a couple of years. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, R.J. Petrelli. R.J. Petrelli. Take a note, please. Yeah, I'm Somebody unmute yourself. I am, sorry. Um, no, I think everybody's said it. Oh, well, may, uh, my uh, sister. Oh, I'm sorry. sorry. May, uh, may, um, do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in the matter I'm hearing? I do. Okay. Thank you. So, um, yeah. No, I think uh, people have spoken before, including my sister. And, uh, and, and including Wendell, uh, and he expressed his opinion too. The family, family is a great family. They ha always have been mm -hmm. uh, in, in growing up and uh, they did move in in 1964. I've uh, been fantastic neighbors to the family. And anyway, with all that said, concerning about flooding, that's already been talked about. Um, mm -hmm. Flood insurance that people don't have today or don't need today they might obviously find themselves being in a flood zone uh, and that's going to be required if they have a mortgage that's going to require flood insurance which is not inexpensive so with mm -hmm. all that said i'll pass it on to the next person thank you very much anyone else john please take the hat down please John? There I am. All right. John, will you take the oath, please? I am I am here. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in the matter now in hearing? I do. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to speak, you know, I'm, I'm not going to say I'm opposed or unopposed to this. I just want to let the people who are just speaking to say, just be nicer. Um, you know, I mean, every developer has the rights to do stuff on their land and everybody has the right to do something. And I just want everyone to be like um, more civil and not say anything negative about, you know, one Quincy person to another Quincy person. I think the applicant is a great Quincy person and is an asset to the community. I'm not currently living in the city right now. I'm in my cottage down in onset, but I'm taping this meeting because I care about the city. So, I mean, let's all just, you know, when you vote on this, just remember if we're gonna start a precedent and we're gonna stop this, we just have to be consistent. So when, you know, an applicant or somebody drives by and sees all the construction going on and stuff, they, you know, they, the old saying say, monkey see, monkey do, they see something happen and they think they can do it. So it is really confusing. You know, the applicant is just coming here in good faith. He's asking for something. Let's all be civil and let the board make a decision because if you guys are going to appeal this, um, they can use this sort of stuff against your appeal. So everyone okay. has to just be civil, get along, and we all want a better Quincy. Thank you. Thank you, John. Anyone else? Councilor, do you want to speak? Chuck in there, I just saw him. Chuck. 
Yeah. Anyone else who wants to speak? Who's up? Councilor Phelan. Must have stepped away. All right. Oh, you got muted. No, I'm not. This isn't. This isn't what five. This is Councilor McCarthy. I'm no, not going to speak. I know. Not on this one. I know that. I just thought you had your name. I saw your name up there, and I just didn't know if you wanted to say something. I asked you. No, I'm just. I'm listening to it right now. I'm not in the room. So. McCarthy, one of the last few words. Uh, yeah, uh, if everybody's done. Uh, Marty, uh, I, I think that the community meeting was um, eye-opening to the word community. Uh, the neighbors uh, are really um, concerned uh, about the neighborhood. I know that uh, Mr. Soho, uh, his family been there for a long time, but I think the, uh, the word community kind of jumps out on this one where they want to make sure that uh, – the area down there, which is a very busy street, flood zone, and an area of space that probably is very rare in Marymount um, isn't taken away. Um, there were co some comments made that I've looked into with Mr. Duker about the fencing in the back, which is too high, and the fencing in the front. And we're going to look at that also. Um, Approved or not approved, but um, um, I got a solid feeling out of the neighbors that it, it wasn't uh, it wasn't a thing that um, the folks uh, wanted. And again, I I, I think that um, Mary Lou Petrelli summed it up uh, pretty well in saying that you know there was there's no fault with the neighbors. They love the neighbors. Um, they just don't like the project. And um, I think it might be something that. Um, you know, down the road uh, might hurt that neighborhood a little bit. So um, I heard a lot and clear that night um, that they were uh, they were not good with this project and basically told them that it was up to the board. I'd make my comments, and um, I think I made my comments that I'm uh, leaning towards uh, the neighborhood on this one. And um, so the board can um, make the call. But... Uh, I think there were all good points uh, made by uh, the few people that spoke on both sides. Thank you. Thank you, Council. Is there anyone else that I missed? Anyone? Okay. Does the board have any? Does the board have any applicants? One person. Who? Berry. 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 Yes. All right, would you like to speak yes. opposed or undecided? Opposed. Okay, uh, Mr. Chen, if you could Yes, please. um, do you solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in the matter now in the hearing? I do. Thank you. Well, I just want um, to bring the main point that our lot is just not big enough. And this meeting, um, I understand, and I, um, I agree with all points that the neighbors um, said, but it's just not big enough. Like, I, I'm really confused why it would be even considered to build the house on the, um, uh, like, there are some regulations that we have to follow. And this lot, lot is not big enough. And of course, you know, the flood zone, uh, are we are concerned who is going to, if we have a problem, if the flood insurance goes up, if, if, you know, who's going to be paying and responsible for all this? But it's just not big enough. I think that's the main, um, should be the main point. Okay. I'm done. Thank you very much. Is there any questions of the board members and the applicant? No, I don't have any questions on this. No. No Mr. question. Mr. Good. All right. Uh, here's, here's what I, when I first went there and looked at this, and this is the reason I'm deciding this. It's not, I think a lot, a lot probably could hold another house, uh, but it is a beautiful yard and I hate to, I hate to see that get lost up there, but uh, that corner, 
You want to put a driveway in the corner? It's probably the craziest thing I ever heard. Because I'll tell you what, someone's going to get killed there because I parked there. And about four people almost hit me. And I was on the sidewalk. Never mind even trying to pull in a driveway there. It could probably be detriment to someone's life. So that's the reason. And it's not about it's not about the flooding. It's not. I don't think that's ever going to happen. I really don't. I think it's a detriment to someone to pull in that driveway if they put a driveway there. It's it's like life or death. I'll tell you. When I, what I saw there in ten minutes, I was there, horrified. You know, so imagine trying to pull in a driveway. There. So I wouldn't put that in no one's life. Uh, I'm going to say no for that reason only, just just for the reason that someone could get killed pulling a driveway there. Uh, I think it's an unsafe, and, and it's it's right on. It's right when you come down. If you're coming down the other way and someone's pulling out, you wouldn't. I, it's just I don't know. You know, it looks like it should be one lot, and that's what should be there. One lot, one lot only. Uh, could it hold it? Like I said, it probably could hold that house, and I don't think there'd probably be a flooding problem down there. But uh, someone's going to get killed down there is my problem when I when I was one of the ones that said yes. Yeah. So I'm going to say no. Any comments, Mr. O'Brien? Um, <clears throat> my comment is that the configuration of the lot in the L shape. Yeah. I have a hard pro I have a problem with that. Mm -hmm. um, just to get the square footage that they're getting and not still not making um, minimums. So mm -hmm. I'll be voting against. All right, Mr. Radell. I mean, I think there's some situations that, you know, to, to John's point that this is exactly why we have zoning laws is that we can look at each situation independently of another mm -hmm. situation. So, mm -hmm. you know, to think that, that an entire city that's been here since, you know, I think I was just reading the other day that we're like the third oldest city in the country. To think that we're going to have cookie cutter lots, John, is just, it's just not going to happen, which is why we exist. Um, that being said, I, I don't like it in this particular lot. You know, we've improved other subdivision of lots where they make more sense. I mm -hmm. find it just it just doesn't make sense in this situation. So I'm gonna. All right. Uh, any comments, Mr. Chen? Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman. Um, I happen to be very familiar with this house. I uh, spent my uh, several summers there in the '70s, living there mm -hmm. as a college student. So. Um, I, I lived in the basement, and I am very familiar with the water table uh, at this location. <laughs> and I, I do have to say that it's got a very high water table. Um, there is a there is a mice problem because of the creek across yeah. the street. And um, I am concerned about the water. I'm concerned about the flooding. I don't know what the engineering is going to uh, yield whether it could improve the situation with engineering or whether it would exacerbate the situation. Mm -hmm. uh, having said that, um, <clears throat> when you look at the lot, like you said, Marty, it looks like a big lot. It looks like it could hold a second house. And the reason why it probably cannot is because the existing house is it's horizontal. Right. The way that it's built, it's not a vertical house like all the other houses right. in Marymount. Right. This house is very long, and so it takes up a lot of the space. If the house had been more vertically built, I think that you know we'd be looking at a very different situation. So um, it's interesting because I, I see a lot of the people here in Zoom that I that I came to know back in the 70s and 80s when I was um, part of the Lee family, mm -hmm. uh, including Wendell when he first moved in. So. My feeling, and, and I also agree with you, Marty, on the street issue. I am very concerned. That street is crazy when it comes to, to traffic. And I really think that that's an accident waiting to happen over there with another driveway right at that spot. So I have a lot of reservations. I don't know whether some of the flooding issues could be addressed by Steve or the engineering team, whether that would actually enhance or improve the, uh, the water table situation over there or whether it would exacerbate it. Mm. Uh, looking at the plans and the drawings, um, I have to say that I, I don't, I don't uh, like the, the, uh, the proposal. Okay. Uh, Mr. Himmel. Um, everybody's mentioned the uh, traffic problem there, which has just gotten worse and worse and worse over the years. And um, 
Council Chin has brought up the fact that this house is oddly placed. It's 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 a, it's a long, low house. Trimmed by the last of the John dropped out. All right, John, we got to get you back. John, pay the electric bill. <laughs> he should be right in. He should be right back. We still got to get his vote. So. I mean, he's already four. But give him two seconds. We'll be right back to two seconds. We got to get him logged back in. He's one of our board members. It should take two minutes. We'll come right back. <clears throat> Which link comes back? So logs on. Come on, John. Technology is beautiful, but works. All right. Why don't we just take two minutes and we'll run? We, we got to make a phone call and find out what happened. kicked out yeah <laughs> kicked out okay so the, tra the traffic problem the um i mean the house is obviously placed there for a reason and the way it was i i just don't think that this is a good mix for the neighbor i don't think it's a good mix for traffic so i would be voting negative all right mr o'brien can i have a motion please mr chairman regarding case number 20-42 richard soho for a special permit, floodplain, and a variance to re-subdivide the three lots into two building lots, maintaining the existing dwelling and constructing a new dwelling on the premises numbered 168 Furnace Brook Parkway. I'd like to make a motion to deny the requested special floodplain and variance. Second it. Second. Uh, can we have a roll call, please? Martin Aiken? Yes. Charlie O'Brien? Yes. Russell Chin? Yes. Brian Riddell? Yes. John Himmel? Yes. John? <laughs> John? We got him. He said yes. Okay. Yes. All right. All right, Steve. The motion was denied. Sorry. Further on to tonight's agenda. Oh, I left my thing in there. That's mine. Oh, oh okay. I'm, I'm sure they gave it I was trying to put it up there. I got my This my, uh, my two.
I have access. I know, but I just got two. Here they go. Further tonight's agenda, ZBA case number 2044, Ronald and Gloria Schum for a variance finding construct second story expansion over the existing dwelling on the premises of the Nine Moon Island Rose. The applicant and representative here. Who, who's taking care of our uh, shoe? Is that the, uh, the handy, handy man, hottie man? Gene man. Two blocks down from me. Yep. Yeah. I couldn't unmute myself earlier, so. <laughs> All right. Why don't you tell us what you want to do here? Morning. On Nine Moon Island. Hold on. Does it matter? Sorry to bother. You. Sorry to jump in. Does it matter that I'm going to butter? Uh, no. As long as you're in a butter and no one, as long as the applicant doesn't mind. Uh, let me see. There's only five bus. We don't have an extra to put in. Let me ask the applicant. And yep. I, I believe the app, the owner is actually here. Um, do you mind? Do you mind? We have. I'm gonna. First of all, I want to swear you in. Second of all, I got to ask you a question. One of the people on the board is an abutter. Do you mind him being in on this case? You can say no, and there'll be four people voting. You, you got to have all four to win. If you okay, say um, yes, yes, there's five of us. You got to have four to win. Um. Can I just ask system? that um, one of the um, applicants, uh, the architects representing, his name is uh, Jin Singh. If he can uh, un unmail him. Who's Good evening, speaking? guys. I'm in. I could not unmute myself earlier. Okay. Are you speaking for the applicant? Yes. All right. The question is an abutter is one of your board members sitting on this case. You have a right to not have him on there or have him. It's up to you. That's you fine. feel he like can... it would be good or bad or whatever, I don't know. But he just so... just announced he's in a butter to this project. That's fine. I could have him on. OK, so okay. we have five. Continue. You have the floor. OK, um, if you don't mind, if I can uh, share my screen. Sure thing. Can you give him that? All right, he's doing that now, fine. All set. All set. So um, this is the census map. Um, show the uh, existing nine Moon Island Road. Um, yep. So the existing lot itself is 6,000 square foot. Um, the applicant is uh, proposing to um, add a second story additions to the to the house. Um, mm -hmm. He recently purchased properties and his his looking forward to uh, do a second four additions and um, to be his residence. Um, the new footprint, just want to show the board. Um, this is a site plan. So what he's proposing is to square off some of the um, area in the front and back. Mm -hmm. It's a small additions. Okay. So, with the, with the front and um, there's an existing existing setback of yep. the of the uh, main structure is going to be, be remaining the same as 17.5, yep. which he's he's also proposing a, a little roof overhang just to uh, protect yeah, the front yeah. entrance, and he's proposing to add a, a little addition in the back. Mm -hmm. um, expanding the footprint so other than that um the at uh, the addition will be up above on this on the second levels mm -hmm. um on the plan here is also show where the the dark line is the expand the foundations yeah um so that's kind of basically what the proposal is mm -hmm. um Going straight up with two little additions, you know, a little piece in the front, a little piece in the back, correct? Yes, this is the elevation of the building, um, basically adding the second story um, right. and turn it into a two car garage. Right. And, you know, it's going to be very nice to the neighborhood. 
-hmm. And one one thing I want to point out that this is the um, assessor's map. This yeah. is the lot line. The Moon Island was actually all the way further out. So the existing driveway will remain the same. So it's plenty of car for mm -hmm. uh, parking. Mm -hmm. Good. I don't have any questions. Any questions to any board members at this time? Not for me. No questions for me. Okay. No questions for me. I don't know. Thank you. We'll go on to, uh, does anyone that like to speak in favor? Raise your hand. Are those all phones on? The video. Anyone like to speak in favor? First call. Second call. No one. Third call. No one. Correspondence. I have a letter here from the DPW, September 11, 2020, 9 Moon Island Road, case number ZBA 20-44, reviewed with middle for the above reference project and have no comments. Is there anyone opposed or undecided? Opposed or undecided. First call. Second call. Anyone opposed or undecided? One sixty eight, yeah. Third call. Oh, I've got the hearing closed. Uh, I see exactly what you're going to do. I think it's going to be a beautiful house when it's all done. And I like the layout and the design of the whole thing. I'll be voting in favor. Likewise. I'm in favor. Nice looking place. I'm in favor. I'm in favor too. Could I have a, a motion and a roll call vote, please? Mr. Mr. Chairman, we. Yep. We, Who's yep. first, me? You're up, you're up first. There you go, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Mr. Chairman, regarding case number 2044, Ronald and Gloria Shum for a variance and a finding to construct a second story expansion over the existing dwelling on the premises, number nine, Moon Island Road, Quincy. I make a motion to grant the requested variance and finding as it is. Second. Roll call vote. Martin Aiken? Yes. Charlie O'Brien? Yes. Russell Chin? Yes. Brian Riddell? Yes. John Himmel? Yes. Case number ZBA 2048. And I, and I, Ying, Shang, Lin Wei? He man's all set. He's coming right back anyway. Okay. For a variance to legalize the two separate non conforming lots and construct a single family lot on the vacant parcel of 26 Brown Oil Road. Is the outfit in there? Is the outfit in here? Yeah, there, G Man, right? You're up. Hello, good evening again. Uh, my name is G Man from Hardy Man Design Group. Um, representing the client um, on these petitions. Um, if I may, I'd like to pull up the plan again. Yep. Uh, so um, this is the census map of the of the subject lot, yep. and. Uh, what you see here is the, the blue line is the subject lot and also um, the property is combined up with in two parcels um, by you know, because of the existing non-conforming and under the same ownership, the two lots have been merged together. What the applicant like to do is to um, put the site plan here. Just kind of weird. Yep. The applicant like to do is uh, seeking permission to we subdivide into two parcel. Uh, the owner currently live at the uh, existing parcel. Um, what he would like to do is his daughter will be getting married in a couple of years. He is the builder himself. He would like to build this house for his daughter to move in um, in a couple of years when she get married. 
um, the, the structural itself um, meet, the proposed structural is going to meet all the uh, Songling setback, uh, the, the side yard setback. And the front, the rear yard setback, uh, the main building is going to meet that. Uh, but it's proposing a rear porch, which extending into the um, the rear yard setback. Um, and the front yard setback, we paste basically um, resident A, we require 25 feet, but you know, in context with the neighborhood, we are pretty much taking an average of the existing house surrounding the uh, neighborhood to to set up the, uh, to, to lay out the, the building. Um, it's going to be a new driveway um, actually, the driveway kind of um, go over the parcel line, but we are extending the dr the driveway to to fit in um, two cars on the driveway. Plus, the the house itself is going to be um, proposed one car garage, so there's there's going to be three cars proposed for this uh, additional house. Um, it's a very uh, quiet neighborhood, um, so it's. I don't think traffic is a concern uh, with onboard parking under this proposal. The building itself, um, we are calling three story, but um, it's, you know, it's actually the third story is kind of like a full doma. So the height of the building pretty much consisting, inconsistent to the neighboring house. Um, so, and um, I'd like to, this is the um, elevation of the house. It is, this is the front where there's a single car garage with the front door um, and the side elevations. And you can, as you can see, it's um, a porch walking out the second story in the rear and walk down to the uh, ground. And on the side elevation where you have the side door, this is where the driveway is going. going. Yeah. Uh, Biggest house. And this is, um, in interior four four plans, you know, garage and you know it's a uh, more like a base. Well, family room, storage room, and walk upstairs is the uh, family room and bedroom and an additional bedroom on the uh, top floors. And I have some photo. This is the this show where the house lot is located. Um, and the empty vacant lot is where the new house is proposed. As, as you can see with the neighborhood context, um, they are all in the similar lot size. Um, so it's, I think the new house is pretty much brand in into the same neighborhood. Um, the well, how, big, how, big, how big is this house? This house. Um, I believe I have it roughly around 2,200 square feet. Two. 22, 2200, I think. I don't have the environment. So big when you need when you need relief. Why why do you build it so big and so long? Um you're asking to split up something. Now you're asking for relief for here. You're asking for relief in the front. I mean, it, it, geez, the parking, you got parking right next to the, the curb line and it's like I get it for the stuff that was there. This is this is new. We don't have to do this. We really don't. You don't have to. You don't have to build them as big as you just because you want them. You know, you got you got new laws and new rules. Let's bring them down a little bit. So, uh, I don't know how the other guys feel. I just think like you didn't need a house that big in that lot. You know, the rules today are a little different. You want a house? Let's, let's bring it down, way back a little bit. That's just how I feel. I don't know how anyone else feels. Yet. But you're asking to subdivide a lot. Now you're asking for relief in the on the fronts, the backs. Come on. Come on, let's get real. Well, I guess we can we can get comments from the board and um, we can yeah. take that into consideration and you know. Um, well, I just think I think it's 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 you know people just like ask 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 like God. I mean, you're trying to do something. We just said no to a guy who had more land than you, and then you stuff this big house in it. You know, let's talk about fairness. Here's fairness. You know, I, you the applicant is very to work. The other ones make it look like the other houses. Yeah, I think the backup applicant is willing to work with the board and get your okay. feedback and, and yeah. come back with uh, yes, a yes. different. But you bring a proposal here with like five needs. It's like you shouldn't have to. You shouldn't have to. I think I think you should have brought the needs way down when you have something new. That's just me, just being honest. Maybe that's my fault sometimes. Maybe I'm a little too honest. 
sorry about that. I don't know how the other board members feel about this, but let's let's start asking about questions. I mean, we're giving them fronts, backs. Come on, like, really? You get building a house here. Build a house that fits in your lot. You get a shot lot as it is with 48, 48 and I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I just get frustrated sometimes, I guess. Sometimes maybe I've been here too long. Maybe it's time. All right. Uh, and this, this to begin with, I hate this whole thing, this whole setup. Drives me crazy. Not seeing people. I just can't stand it. I, it really, it, it's just brutal. It's COVID better get over quick. Uh, Brian, you laugh. You're the thing to say up there. I'm just watching your meltdown over here, you know? <laughs> yeah. It's like meltdown. I mean, I mean, my comments kind of were going to be similar. Like, I, I Look, I, I get that the lot should have never uh, probably been a double lot. Like, you know, I mean, they should have never subdivided it. I mean, combined right. it into one years ago, you know. And it, it, you look at every other lot on the street, and they're all the same. 50 by, you know, 60. Um, they were built 100 years ago. 50 by 90. You know, the the uh, to your point, though, the house is big, too. Yeah. yeah. It's tall. It's, you're basically three stories. You're asking us for Everything, right. right? So, Brian, I don't know how you feel about this. So yeah, no, I, I feel the exactly the same way. When I look at yeah. it from the front, yeah. When I look at it from the front, it looks like it should be on a lot three times the size of the one that they're trying to put it on. Yeah. So I would like to see it brought down, yeah. um, at least a, a story. Well, shrink it up. Make it. Make it like. Make it like. What the rules are? Uh, who else is up there? Russell. We're dealing with a res a lot, and um, I recognize that um, when you look at the picture, the overhead, it looks like there's a spot there for a house, and there isn't a house there. But it, you know, I have this expression: it's okay to be a pig, but it's not okay to be a hog. And I think, I think that this is this ask is way way too much. It is. It's like blew my mind. So I ask you to go back to the drawing board. I also don't like driveways in the front of the house, facing the street. I have a pet peeve about garage doors, new construction facing the street. Is it? It's just a weird configuration, and it's not going to help this house blend into the neighborhood. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Hamill, comments? Yeah, I don't like it either. It represents almost 50% of the size of the lot for the house. I think it's just way, way too much. It needs yeah. to be reduced substantially. All right. We'll have them uh, work with Mr. Duker, and uh, we can postpone this till. Well, they might need new relief, so can we have them reapply? I don't know if they're going to need new relief. They do have to be reality. All right. Uh, new relief, if anything, would be less relief, a lot less relief okay. than what they're asking. Mm -hmm. So, I'll, so over the head of a uh, uh, month, I think they would ask for less relief than more relief. So we wouldn't have to advertise, I would hope. Yeah, I would like to request the board to continue the, the case and uh, we can go back to the drawing board and, you know, we work the layout. All right. Let me uh, let let's let the council speak too. Let the council speak. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I I am in total agreement with you. Having sat on two of the times when the zoning was changed, wanted yeah. to happen to been on the council a while. Uh, I was there when it was changed. It was changed for a reason, right. and to keep non-conforming lots from being subdivided and monster right. houses being put on it. And that was the spirit of the law. And I thank the zoning board for taking that. But I would also say to Mr. Chi Man, I got all the calls from all the neighborhood and I was in touch with several of the neighbors. They're very upset about this. They didn't, there was no time to get a neighborhood meeting together or anything. And I think if you had sat and talked to your neighbors and showed the plans, you would have seen they had a lot of concerns that weren't being addressed in this. And maybe it could have been done, done differently. I think most of the neighbors are against anything going in here. So, I would, I would think that it would be a good idea for you to sit down with your neighbors and go over the plans. And, uh, because basically for a lot of these neighbors, who I see a lot of them on here, 
who sent me letters and different things over and I'm sure you got a lot of communication students did you? Yeah, that, uh, I think that would be better before the next meeting if we have oh, to get well, if I if I might do you do you want to have a meeting with with him in the neighborhood in October and we'll meet in November uh sure that's I, I think that would be better for the people for the okay. neighbors we can do it I've done these a couple of times like one that's not on tonight 224 yeah. President's Lane we met yeah. in the driveway of the neighbor yeah. right there and we can yeah. social distance I bring masks and hand sanitizer yeah. We lay the plans out on a table and people can see right. and get right. the two cents up. Okay, great. We'll definitely do that. All right. So I expect the G man to do that. And why don't we pick a number in uh, a date in November? Madam November Clark? 17th is the only one we have because of the election. Oh, yeah, because the election. November 17th. We move this right. to November. Mr. O'Brien, thank you, Council. Mr. Mr. Chairman, regarding case number 20 48. Ying Sen and Lane Wei for a variance to legalize the two separate non-conforming lots to construct a single family home on the vacant parcel on the premises number 26 Ferndale Road. I make a motion to move this until uh, November 17th of 1920. You have 2020, Marty, I caught you there. Yeah. Second, yeah. <laughs> Second year. 1920, whoa. whoa. Flashback. Uh, can we have a... A vote. Martin Akins? Yes. Charlie O'Brien? Yes. Russell Chin? Yes. Brian Riddell? Yes. Ron Himmel? Yes. <laughs> okay. Let's carry that. Further under tonight's agenda, Ted Walsh, case number ZBA 2049. Ted Walsh, for variance, finding special permit, flood plan to construct an addition on the existing dwelling premises, 45 Winthrop Street. Hey man, are you in this? Yes. Right, hey Rebecca. All right, good evening. Uh, again, um, Chi Man from Hardy Man Design Group, uh, representing a client, Ted Walsh, on this. Uh, proposal and if I may I'm going to call up the um, presentation material again okay. uh, so. So this, is a, this is a site plan of the um, of the proposed project right Yep. One second. Okay, nice. So it's an existing house on, um, well, yes. I guess this is also a, a, a double lot. It has been combined into one lot. Um, so what the, the, the crime requesting is to build additions of the existing house. So mm -hmm. the the, the new additions pretty much compile to all the um, zoning setback. Yes. Um, th this location is also in flood zone, so we're also asking for special flood um, uh, relief. Yeah. Uh, the new building will be up, the new, the new section of the addition will be all up above the uh, flood elevations. Um, one foot above the flood elevations. The flood yeah. elevation is A A12, and um, the new proposed floor is going to be at elevation 13. And the garage, um, I just show you the elevation, um, the four, the architectural plans. So this is the. Um, this is the site plan uh, with the with the proposed addition on it. It's going to be a, a, a garage coming in, two car garage, mm -hmm. and on the first floor and some storage space, and walk up to this to a level that is on the second floor, up above the garage. And because this is on the first zone, the the, the ground floor of the new addition is going to have the foot vent. Yeah. Um, to comply to the uh, FEMA regulations. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, pretty straightforward. I mean, he's going to reconfigure the driveway to line up with the new two new car garage. Um, 
is the existing deck that is going to be built on uh, Sonotube. Tube. Um, that's pretty much it. Um, the, pro the proposal has already gone to conservation and got the uh, conservation approval. So I, I don't believe there's uh, any concern with the um, engineering. They already comments on the on the uh, conservation commissions. Yes. Any questions from uh, the board members? Not for me at this time. No questions. There you go. There's no uh, there's no requirements for the existing house to be upgraded as part of the flood zone when you do a rehab or anything, right? Uh, per the FEMA regulations, if the if the addition is structurally independent. Okay. Okay. The only, the only work he's going to do with the existing is to punch opening. Okay. No questions. No question. Okay, thank you. Is there anyone that would like to speak in favor? Anyone want to speak in favor? Councillor. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman and Board. Um, yeah, the Walshers have been there for a long time. Uh, as Mr. Mann said, uh, CONCOM. Uh, Approve them. It's a 10,000 plus square foot lot. It'll give them a little more room for any grandkids that come uh, Teddy Walsh and his lovely wife Lisa's way. And uh, I'm glad to see them stay in the neck and um, and um, put this addition on. So full support. Thank you. Thank you, Council. Is there anyone else in favor? Second call? Anyone? Third call. Oh, John Rotterfeld. John Rotterfeld? John? You there? Can you hear me? Yep, go ahead. Okay. You already took a note, John. Um, okay, basically, I asked a couple questions. I, I think I'm in favor of this. I'm always, this is residential A we're talking yep. about here. And, um, I was looking at that plan. How big is the square feet of the, the base of the new square that they're building? The lot itself is 10,000 square foot. Oh, no, not the lot size, but that, you know, it looks like they're building, a, like he just said, that like almost like a new structure. So what's the size of that new structure? Uh, 24 by 38 and then a six foot to connect to the other house. Okay, so, and, and that's... 30, 30 feet. 30 by 38, a little less than that, but 30 by 38. Is it one story or two stories of living space? It's one story living ba space with a, with a basement garage. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. No, I, I think it looks like a good project. I'm in favor of it. Thank you, John. Thank you. Anyone else? Third call. Call up part of the hearing close. I have a letter here from the DPW, September 14th. 2020 45 Winter Street, case number ZBA 2049. We will do this middle of a buff reference project and have the following comments. One, upon completion of the project as built plan showing all utilities, building footprints needs to be submitted, and elevation certificate also is required for the proposed dwelling. It is in a flood zone. The road pavement was repaved in 208. Therefore, street openings permit will not be issued until 2023. DPW will not allow any digging on the street until 2023. Is there anyone opposed or undecided? Is there anyone here opposed or undecided? Second call, opposed or undecided. Third call, call up by the hearing, closed. Uh, I think it's a beautiful project. I think they're gonna put in the notes house when they're done. I'll be voting in favor. Likewise, in favor. The property's well maintained. It's a beautiful piece of land. Mr. Chin, comments? I think it's a good project. I'm going to vote in favor. Mr. Radel? In favor. Mr. Hemmel? Nice project. In favor. Charlie, can I have. Uh, uh, Mr. Make a motion, please. Mr. Chairman, regarding case number 20-49, Ted Walsh for a variance finding special flood permit, flood 
a special permit for a floodplain to construct an addition on the existing dwelling on the premises number 45 Winter Street in Quincy. I make a motion to grant the variance finding special floodplain permit. Thank you. Seconded. Seconded. Roll call. Bart Nagan. Yes. Charlie O'Brien. Yes. Russell Chin. Yes. Brian Riddell. Yep. John Hamill. Yes. Further on tonight's business, EBA case 2050. Larry Hemingway for a variance to construct an addition of an awning and arbor on the front of the house and then the deck at the side entrance. Uh, entrance from the premise number 40, 44 Rock Island Road. Is Laurie Hemingway there? Laurie? We're here. You're there. You have the floor. Laurie wants to tell us what you want to do. Uh, I'll, I'll take that, uh, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Also, co owner of the house. We're trying to um, mitigate in the front of the house, which thank, thankfully you all granted our addition in our current variance, knowing that it's a very small and condensed lot right. in Howe's Neck. And we appreciate that for sure, knowing that what we're trying to do here is to both improve our a house that we feel uh, dear to and want to uh, stay here as long as we possibly can. Mm -hmm. uh, and in doing that, we'd like to make a, a few additional improvements. One is an arbor on the front of the house, which will be used to grow a beautiful vine and <laughs> which will, in fact, uh, be used as green infrastructure and help to shade what is a Western exposure to our house. Mm -hmm. And uh, in addition to that, the small porch that we would like to add really almost like a six by 10 porch is for an additional means of egress coming off of our kitchen uh, and allowing for, you know, bringing in the groceries, et cetera. Mm -hmm. In addition, the, the front awning also gives us a shelter from rain and conditions as are uh, prevalent in the Northeast, uh, yep. which are very damaging to packages which unfortunately we are continuing to get uh, in this current era. So we'd right. like to make sure that we have a place to get out of the weather. We want to cool our house passively and mm -hmm. have another means of egress uh, adding to the safety of our house. Uh, and we've added only a very minimal amount of deck here in order mm -hmm. to make sure it, while it's somewhat functional, it just allows us to, to move along in that current space. And all this you did while well, you're doing your renovations now, you figured a few more improvements you want to do. That's okay. correct. That's uh, correct. That's what I thought when I when I read your application and uh, and it's going along. When are they gonna be done down there? We are hoping by the end of October. Oh nice. Gotta get out the whip, get them going. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so, this will help if approved. We'll help oh, us yeah. where we can pay the mortgage. That's right. <laughs> I'm like paying a mortgage and a rent. Super awesome. Well, <laughs> All right. Any questions of the board? Mr. O'Brien? Not at this time. Mr. Raydell? I have not. Uh, Mr. Chin? No okay. questions. Mr. Himmel? No questions. Okay. Anyone like to speak in favor? Is there anyone online who wants to speak in favor? Who? Oh. Counselor, you're up. Thank you. Um, Marty, uh, and, and the board. Um, yeah, uh, Scott and Laurie, uh, you know, came before us before to uh, upgrade the house and come along real well. Um, I think House Neck is uh, really pleased that, you know, they want to stay, want to do these basic additions now to just improve the home. I'm in full support and, uh, you know, they're great people they have for the community. Um, as you know, Marty, they're very involved with the sailing program down at the Yacht Club and uh, just good good family to have. And I'm glad they're adding to it and hanging in here. So I fully support. Very good. Thank you, Council. Appreciate that. Anyone else like speak in favor? Second call. Third call. All upon the hearing calls, I have a letter here from GPW dated September 14th. Uh, 
44 Rock Island Road, case number ZBA 2050, reviewed the above reference project and have no comments. Is there anyone opposed or undecided online? Opposed or undecided? First call. Mm -hmm. Second call. Third call closed. Uh, I, I, and, and I know what they're doing down their house to make it such a small lot and they're trying to do the best they can with what they're working with and the few little additions more that they want to make it more livable. I'll be sure to make them uh, easier to live there. I'd be in favor. Once you get the contractor on board, you might as well keep going instead of waiting and waiting <laughs> and waiting. I'll be in favor. Brian? Mr. Riddell? I'm good. Good. Russell? Mr. Okay. Chief? And Mr. Himmel? In favor. Could I have a motion, please, Sally? Mr. Chairman, regarding case number 20-50, Laurie Hemingway for a variance to construct an addition on a, of an awning and an arbor on the front of the house and a deck with a new side entrance on the premises number 44 Rock Island Road, Quincy, I make a motion to grant the requested variance. Roll call after seconded. Seconded. Yes. Charlie O'Brien? Yes. Russell Chin? Yes. Brian Riddell? Yes. John Himmel. Yes. Thank you. Further on to tonight's uh, congratulations, Laurie and Scott. Thank you. Thank you. GBA case number 2053. NI bond for variance to construct a new single family dwelling on the lot 224 President's Lane, which we already oh, moved, you. right? Yep. Yeah. Postponed. <laughs> I just got a new paper. I can't find my other one that I already ordered. Hey, you can have mine. Yeah. Uh, Palmero and Alexis Federico, case number 2054. For variance to erect a side yard porch and a partial roof on the premise number 39 Richfield. Is the applicant a, a representative here? Yes. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chin, if you could swear him in, please. It's um, to you, song to swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in the matter now in hearing. Yes. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, uh, members of the board. My name is James Rudzer, and I'm an attorney representing uh, Tommy and uh, Alexis Federico. Uh, before the board is our proposal, or is our proposal to erect a side yard deck that includes a covered portion. Uh, the relief we're requesting is approximately one and a half feet. Uh, the proposed uh, structure would be a, nine feet seven inches from the rear lot line. And uh, this is a corner lot on Richfield Street. And so I believe under section 4.3.6.1, um, where the width of the lot is less than uh, 75 feet, that we would have two and a half feet off of the required 13 feet of, uh, of setback. Uh, Tommy and, uh, and, and, and Alexis bought the house a year ago, the week they got married. As you can see, they have already started a family and they plan to stay in the neighborhood. And this is an <laughs> opportunity for them to have some outdoor space um, that is both open and, uh, and would have a roof on it. Mm -hmm. Very good. I have no questions uh, at all. I think that's-, that's Not at this time for me. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Radell? I got no questions. Mr. Chin? No questions. Mr. Hamill? No questions. Okay. Uh, any here like speak in favor? Anyone want to speak in favor? John? Your hand up? John, you're up. I'll go quick. John Rotorfield, 62 Grandwall Road. Um, I'm in favor. I'm just going to say that, you know, you wasted your money on that attorney. All he had to do was have that baby. And they were <laughs> <laughs> so, good luck and welcome to the neighborhood. You're not asking for much. I don't really understand what the, what the neighborhood said. No matter what your frontage is, you still have to abide by all the setbacks. So thank you. Thank you. Is there anything you can say about? Oh. Uh -huh. Second call. 
third call. Call our private hearing calls. I got a letter here from DPW, September 14, 2020, 39 Richfield Street, case number ZBA 2054. We reviewed the above reference project and have no comments. Anyone opposed or undecided? Opposed or undecided? First call? Second call? Anyone? Third call, closed. Uh, it's beautiful. I like what he's doing to have a nice base cell side that he can uh, he can enjoy. I'll be voting in favor. Uh, likewise. Right now? I'm in favor. Welcome to the neighborhood. Thank, Thank you. you. Favor as well. Mr. Hamill. In favor. Could I have a motion, please? Uh, Mr. Chairman, regarding case number 20-54, Palermo and Alexis Frederico for a variance to erect a side yard porch with a partial roof on the premises number 39 Richfield Street in Quincy, I make a motion to grant the requested variance. Second. Uh, roll call vote. Martin Nagin? Yes. Charlie O'Brien? Yes. Russell Chin? Yes. Brian Riddell? Yes. John Himmel? Yes. Do I have a motion to uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome to the community. Thank you. Bring a baby to your next meeting, attorney Rudds are there. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Play up. A motion to adjourn. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to adjourn the meeting. Second. Roll call. Martin Aiken? Yes. Charlie O'Brien? Yes. Russell Chin? Yes. Brian Riddell? Yes. Mr. Himmel? Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for everything. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.